So, my Canon EOS M can have 13 stops of dynamic range, and so can yours too. If you want to figure out how to do that, stick around, let's jump into it. Alright, so the aim of today's video is we are going to understand how to get the maximum dynamic range out of the sensor in the Canon EOS M. Now, I've done a video previously talking about how this sensor actually has 11 and a half stops of dynamic range, but there is a very, very cool tool inside of Crop Mood or Magic Lantern, uh, which actually allows you to crank out a little bit more dynamic range. So let's jump into the specifics of this whole process. Alright, so the background of this video is that I've recently moved to Korea. In doing so I had to sell a lot of the camera gear that I use for my professional shoots, uh, for my commercial work and for my weddings and stuff like that. And uh, to be honest, I got used to seeing that delicious 14 stops of dynamic range that came out of the Lumix X5 and the X-T4 here. Now, I also have a deep affinity for the Canon EOS M and I love using this camera to get cinematic Im imagery. And the thing that really lets me down, particularly in the city, when you want to be shooting at sunrise or sunset, is that the dynamic range on the Canon EOS M really lets it down. It really, that part of the image lets you know that you are not dealing with a full-fledged cinema camera. So I downloaded Crop Mood and I got to work, playing around with the dual ISO setting on the Canon EOS M and the findings did astound me. They confused me a little bit at first, but when I finally figured it out, it actually astounded me. Now in testing, it appears that there is no dynamic range added when you shoot in a neutral uh, exposure. Uh, if you kind of, like you can see here, there's two clips that look exactly the same and one was shot with dual ISO and one was shot with not dual ISO. And yeah, you kind of go, okay, well, if I'm gonna just go through all this extra effort of trying to fiddle with my exposure and I'm not really getting any immediate difference, then why would I shoot with dual ISO? But after messing around with the MLV app, I realized that the answer to my problem was hiding in the shadows quite literally and figuratively, of course. So what you actually need to do is to be able to use this extra bit of dynamic range is you need to expose your image almost at clipping point. Okay, you wanna take your highlight and you wanna make that just below clipping point. This exposure method is known as ETTR or exposing to the right. And what this actually allows you to do is then to cleanly pull up those shadows in the MLV app when you're uh, treating the raw video. In using this new feature, I've been blown away with the amount of uh, detail that I can recover in the shadows. And it makes the Canon EOS M almost look like a full-on cinema camera, which is just crazy. We've always talked about it, we always throw around this term, but the dynamic range always let it down. But using this dual ISO feature actually allows you to mimic or to become very close to the look of an actual cinema camera, which is very, very exciting. So just to clarify, I'm claiming 13 stops of dynamic range by testing the EOS M with the dual ISO against my X-T4, which has roughly 13 to 14 stops of dynamic range, depending on who you ask online. So you can see in these test shots here that when you uh, pull the shadows up on the dual ISO clips, you're actually getting a very similar look or exposure to the X-T4 natively. So that is my rationale for saying that the EOS M has 13 stops of dynamic range when using dual ISO. So I wanna thank you for watching my video today and learning about how you can get 13 stops of dynamic range out of your Canon EOS M. If you have any questions or anything about the process, please put it uh, down below. And if you would like to consider subscribing to my channel, my channel is pretty much all about the Canon EOS M and how we can maximize uh, what we can get out of that camera. And really that's kind of the broader theme of my channel. It's about maximizing the gear that you already own and seeing maybe what gear is out there that has a great value proposition for you and your future project. So comment, subscribe, like all that good stuff and I'll catch you in the next video.